Okay, so in this video, I am going to take you through stabilization in DaVinci Resolve. So let's bring up DaVinci and we are in the edit page here, shift four to bring up your edit page. Remember that, nice shortcut. And shift tab to bring up your inspector menu on the right side. So under video, we're gonna scroll down to stabilization. Generally, these are open, but I've just closed them for the video. And if it's not toggled on, you can just easily toggle on stabilization. In the stabilization box on the right side here, we've got different modes. We've got camera lock, we've got zoom, cropping ratio, smoothness, and strength. So if we take our footage here, let's just play it back. We'll have a look at our footage. We can see that it's quite shaky. This was shot on the Helios 44 lens, this one here, which is an old vintage Russian lens and it doesn't have any stabilization built in like a modern lens. So you can see that, you know, even though we've got body stabilization on the Sony, it's still quite shaky footage. We definitely need to stabilize this one. In order to explain the different modes and the cropping ratio, these different things, you need to understand what DaVinci is doing when it stabilizes your footage. DaVinci is going to analyze your clip frame by frame and basically look at the pixels in each of those frames and how those pixels move over the course of time. It'll build out basically a motion path for your footage and then it's going to generate the reverse motion path and apply it to your video. Essentially, this cancels out any movement or shake in your footage and makes it look a bit more natural, a bit more smooth and steady. Also, I've put all of this information into an easy digestible cheat sheet with information on how to use stabilization. And then I've got a bit more technical about what it's actually doing in the back end. So if you want to get nerdy, dive into it and understand it. It's on the cheat sheet, download it for free. It's linked below. So let's stabilize some footage. You can see that the footage is quite shaky. So we've got a bit of camera movement here. You know, you can see the horizon moving around. Let's zoom in and get a bit, bit of a closer look. So you can see very shaky. We've got the horizon bouncing up and down. We've got, this is the life tower. Let's have a look at that. So obviously we're just jumping all around the place. You can see the horizon. It's like we're on a ship. We're on the high seas at Bondi Beach and the ship is experiencing a lot of turbulence. So the majority of the time I will use the perspective mode to stabilize my footage. This is the most encompassing stabilization mode in DaVinci. It'll measure your X and Y axis, your pan, your tilt, your rotation, your zoom, and any perspective changes. So it's going to analyze all of that and then you know feed it back into the model and then do the reverse like I talked about. Generally, this works pretty well. It's very quick and it's powerful. So if I just stabilize it, let's have a look at the clip. So you can see we've cropped in a little bit there. Let's play it back. We can see that it's actually done a pretty good job there. The horizon isn't moving as much. The movement looks a bit more natural, a bit more natural handheld. It's not as jittery, it's smoother and it just looks better already. You'll see we have got camera lock and zoom. I'll come back to camera lock. This is basically if you want to have the image look like it's locked off on a tripod, we can use the camera lock option. And it's, it's really good for some scenarios, but other scenarios, for example, if you're shooting and moving on a gimbal, you'll not want to use camera lock. So I'll come back and explain that in more detail. We've got the zoom checkbox here. And generally you'll want to have this selected. When DaVinci creates the, the reverse path virtual copy of your footage, because it's moving around up and down and trying to counteract the, the, the it's trying to counteract the, the movement, it needs to zoom in on your footage. If you don't zoom in and you stabilize, what's gonna happen is you'll start to see at the edges, you can see on the edges here of the footage, that we're getting, it's, it looks really weird and warpy. Essentially, we're getting black bars around the footage because DaVinci is moving up and down, left and right, trying to trying to stabilize it. If we give DaVinci permission to zoom, it's basically gonna crop in 
to remove any of those black bars around the footage. So now if we play it back, we've got rid of the, the black bars. Cropping ratio is set to 0 0.5. If we bring this down to the very left, 0 0.250, this is going to tell DaVinci to crop in to the maximum. It's allowed to crop in as much as it wants, but we're gonna lose more of the original footage. If we pull this up to the right, essentially we're telling DaVinci that we cannot crop in and we're not gonna get the stabilization. So you can see it looks way shakier now. And then we've got smooth. So if I pull this way up and stabilize, you can see we've, we've punched in even more here. You can see that it's super, super smooth. There's barely any movement, you know, compared to the, the first clip. If you look at that horizon, there's barely any movement there. So this is starting to look really good now. Strength is almost like a blend slider telling Da Vinci how much of all these parameters, how strong it wants Da Vinci to apply them. So if we apply, if we have strength at one, we're going to say, you know, apply it to the strongest possible. If we bring it down to zero, it's going to say basically don't apply it at all. So there's going to be no, there's going to be no stabilization. And then if we bring it down to minus one, it's going to exacerbate the the, the original camera motion. So it's gonna look even shakier and crazy. It's kind of look like it's gone through a tornado. So the strength pulled to the very left is gonna exacerbate. Strength pulled to the very right is going to balance and stabilize the footage. Looks really good, looks smooth, looks great. Now let's go back to camera lock. So if we just reset this. So this was our original footage. Now I shot this with the intention of it looking like it was on a tripod. And I knew if I stood with the camera as steady as possible and pointed it at the lifeguard tower, I would be able to use the camera lock mode in DaVinci to lock it off and basically make it look like it was shot on a tripod. So if I click camera lock and stabilize, you see how everything gets blanked out because DaVinci is going to basically use all of these functions to the maximum. So it's going to be smooth cropping and strength and I can hit stabilize. So what it's gonna do now, you can see we've punched in there quite a lot, but when I play this back, essentially there's gonna be zero movement in the footage. So now it looks like we have shot this on a very sturdy tripod, which is great. So if you're out and about and you're filming something and you don't have your tripod, if you just hold the camera as steady as possible, you will know with the power of DaVinci that you can jump in and use this camera lock mode to stabilize, to give the impression that you shot on a tripod. So this is really, really powerful. And this is kind of what I had in mind when I filmed this. But when you shoot on a lens, that's a vintage lens like this from Russia, it doesn't have stabilization and the shot can be, can be quite shaky. The great thing about DaVinci stabilization is it is, it's extremely quick as well. You can see how fast. Don't forget before you stabilize any footage, you'll want to trim down the clip to the exact size of what you're gonna use. Let's have a look here. We'll do another clip. So let's pop in here. So this was shot on a gimbal and you can see that I'm panning in and it's a little bit shaky. The reason being, the, the gimbal wasn't balanced correctly. So when I shoot on the 24 to 70, I'll usually balance the gimbal at 35 millimeter. And then, you know, so as I'm filming, as I'm running around shooting with the gimbal, so what I'll do is I'll see a shot and I'll, I'll essentially zoom in on the camera lens to about 70 millimeter. But the, the gimbal's already set up. Everything's in place. I'm filming. I don't have time to set the gimbal down, rebalance it at 70 millimeters, and then you know, shoot the, get the shot. Sometimes you just don't have time for these things and you just need to act quickly. So you can see here that it looks a bit jittery. So we've got this weird movement. I like the shot of the food and I want to use this in the video for the client. So what I'll do is I'll just jump into stabilization and we'll press stabilize. So let's have a look and see well, how well DaVinci's done here. Okay, so straight off, we can see we have a nice smooth shot. It's done a pretty good job. It's taken that jittery camera movement and 
basically turned it into a nice smooth pan forward shot. Nothing looks too weird, so maybe we can play around with the settings a bit. Let's say if we want to go for full smoothness, let's see what that looks like. And so it looks even smoother now, like kind of almost like it's slow motion. You know, to me that looks pretty good, you know, considering that the original shot was, look at that, it's so jittery and like it's, that's basically for me, I would never use a shot like that. But I know, you know, I've got this power in DaVinci where we can, let's put the smoothness up to about half 0.5, say. And let's put the cropping ratio down a bit, stabilize it there. Let's have a look at that. So there we go. It saves the shot. And now this is a more than usable piece of footage. Stabilization is, it's a great feature in DaVinci. It's super powerful. You can't really go wrong. So if you use perspective mode and you notice that we've got some wobble in the shot or you've got a bit of unnatural looking movement, you can either drop the mode to similarity, which will analyze it, use a different mode to analyze the footage, or you can drop it down to translation. The other thing you can do is you can either you know, increase the cropping ratio, or if your smoothness is up, you can decrease the smoothing. Generally, you'll find it'll take a little bit of trial and error on a footage, on a piece of footage. A good rule of thumb is if you want something to look like it's been shot on a tripod, use the camera lock. If you're shooting on a gimbal and you've got forward motion, backward motion on the camera, you're not going to want to use the camera lock because it won't, it'll look unnatural essentially. Don't forget to download the cheat sheet and it'll give you all the information from technical to simple and it's all in there so just grab it and there's a bunch of other digital products on on the website some of them are free some of them are paid but have a look see what you like see what you need and they're all linked in the, the description below when i release a video generally i release a free digital product and it's up there for the first 24 hours for free if you're watching this video within the first 24 hours jump in get your product for free if it's not within the first 24 hours don't worry Every video, I'll be dropping a free product, a free download. So in order not to miss it, subscribe and bell so you get notified when the video is posted. I'm posting regularly every week, so if you don't want to miss the, the free products, the free downloads, hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next video.